Okay, now in this section we'll we'll start with some concept of routing. So routing is a process of forwarding the packet from one network to another network. Now here you can see I got a 192.168.1. network and I want to make sure that this 192.168.1. network should communicate with 2. network. Now to make that possible, we did everything. We did a LAN connection and then connecting all the computers in the LAN. And then also we got a WAN connection and the link is up and up after doing some troubleshooting. But still, even if you provide the connectivity in the LAN and the WAN, the router will not forward the packet from one dot to another two dot. Because there is one more, one more last thing we need to configure, something called routing. So we need to ensure that we configure the routing on this router, routing configurations, in order to forward the packet from one network to another network. So let me try. Okay, so routing is a process of sending the packet from one network to another network. So if I want 1.1 to communicate with 2.1, we need to configure something called routing. So routing is a process of forwarding the packet from one network to another network, or we can say that uh, in a, it's a process of establishing communication between two or more different networks. It can be in the same location or it can be on a different locations. If you want to communicate two or more different networks, we must do routing. So routing is mandatory. Now, uh, what is going to do? It's going to forward the packet choosing the best path from the routing table. The routing table will see in, in short. Let's take an example from this network, uh, one dot network to go to two dot network, we got two possible routes. One route is direct route, other route is via, via this route. Now, the router is going to select the best route, any one of this, and it's going to forward the packet. So we'll see more in detail on this. Uh, if you want to communicate between the two different networks, you must configure the routing. And there are three different types of routings we can configure. Either we can configure a static routing, default routing or dynamic routing. Now most commonly we use dynamic routing, which is most commonly used. Uh, if you, but we, we can, we, but the basic concepts will first learn with static routing. And then for, for routing a packets to internet, we use default routing. We'll see this more in detail in our separate sections anyway. Let me give some basic overview of what's the difference between a static and dynamic routing. Now static routing is a manual routing we can say and whereas dynamic routing is uh, automatic routing or automatically learning about the networks. Now in case of static routing manually the administrator is going to decide the best route. So let's take an example. So I'm going to take a small diagram here. I got a router A connecting to router B. And then I got some couple of routers here. Router A connecting to router B. And then router C, router D and router E. Now if I want to go from A to E. So assume that I, I, go, I want to go from A to E. There are two possible routes. Either I can go via ABE. That's the one possible route, the first possible route. Or I can go via ACTE. There are two possible routes. Now, out of these two routes, which is the best route, that depends upon the type of the routing. Okay, so now the router A has to forward the packet to router E. Either it can forward via B or it can forward via C. There are two possible routes. Now the best route is something decided by the administrator in case of static routing. In case of static routing, we call it as a manual routing, which means the route which route the router has to forward the packet, it is decided by the administrator. Uh, whereas in case of dynamic routing, the best route is decided by the router. Administrator is not deciding. With the help of some routing protocols, we'll see more on this. The router is going to decide the best route with the help of some protocols. We call them as routing protocols. And we call this as dynamic routing. Now this, this concept is more similar to like uh, you want to go from a location A to A to X and you got multiple routes to reach. Now you are going to hire a taxi. Probably inside your taxi what you'll do is you can ask, you can tell the driver how to go, go straight, take left, right. And the path, it is something decided by the administrator where you are sitting inside the taxi and you are deciding the best route. Or you can leave to the driver and he knows most of all the routes and he's going to use He's going to have his own calculations and he will take you from whatever the possible route, nearest possible route, and then he'll he will take you to the destination. 
Now there are two ways. Either you can decide the route or you can leave the driver to forward to take you to the destination. Now which one is more better? Now practically in the production networks we use dynamic routing is the one which is most commonly used. Now the reason is uh, there are many reasons actually we can say there are many advantages in that. Uh, more on this we'll get into more in detail when we come back again to dynamic routings. But this is one of the major difference between the static and dynamic routings. Static routing administrator will decide the best route whereas in case of dynamic routing the router is automatically deciding the best route and it just forward the packet. So administrator just do some basic configuration and leave to the router and the router will take care of all the forwarding. So this is one of the major difference between these two. So default routing is generally used for internet connections. We'll, we'll see this more in detail when we come back to the default routings. So I cannot specifically uh, explain in one or two lines. But static routing manually configured and dynamic routing is configured uh, automatically and the router is going to select the best route.